Merdeka! Lagi sekali yang bersemangat, Merdeka! He's the founder of the nation. He led Singapore from British colony to independent country. striving for unity among races and nationalities. An enduring heartbreak in the process. You see, the whole of my adult life, if we lack the guts and the gumption to stand up for ourselves, and I say, write it off. Forget it. He stretched to put the fledgling nation on the world map. And I'm prepared to start all over again. This is entrepreneurship on a political stage, on a national scale. We changed the complexion of Singapore. Lee was drawn to politics by the brutality he witnessed during the Japanese occupation. The discrimination he experienced studying at Cambridge in England reinforced his belief. He formed the People's Action Party in 1954, enrolling both pro and non-communists with one common goal, independence from the British. In 1955, Lee won the Tanjong Pagar seat in his first election, after which he never looked back. In 1959, the British granted Singapore self-governance. Lee then led the PAP to win the Legislative Assembly elections and became Singapore's first Prime Minister. We have in our party men whose integrity and ability have been proved over the years in the struggle to build up the mass movement of the PAP. Their dedication to the cause of an independent, democratic, non-communist, socialist Malaya gives them the drive that will make the machinery of government work efficiently on your behalf. But self-governance brought with it a slew of challenges. Without the British as their common enemy, fault lines within the PAP widen, and pro-communists in the party left to form the Barisan Socialists in 1961. Divisions deepened further when Lee started to fight for Singapore's merger with Malaysia. Make the people feel that they are wanted, not stepchildren or stepbrothers, but one in the family, and a very important member of the family. A referendum was called. In the next few months, we shall settle the constitutional arrangements for merger. In this series of broadcasts, I hope to tell you what merger means, why it's good for all of us. After intense campaigning, and through his persuasive powers, the voters supported the merger. In 1963, Singapore was declared part of the Federation of Malaysia. Now I, Lee Kuan Yew, Prime Minister of Singapore, do hereby proclaim and declare on behalf of the people of Singapore 
that as from today, the 16th of September, 1963, Singapore shall forever be a part of the sovereign, democratic and independent state of Malaysia, founded upon the principles of liberty and justice, and ever seeking the welfare and happiness of a people in a more just and a more equal society. <laughs> But the euphoria was short-lived. The PAP wanted a Malaysian Malaysia, while UMNO, Malaysia's ruling party, believed in Malay supremacy. Despite Lee's efforts to safeguard the merger, the situation became untenable when riots broke out between the Malays and the Chinese in Singapore. And these differences take so many forms and are of so many kinds that it has not been possible to resolve them. And so we decided that we must part company. On August 9, 1965, Singapore was separated from Malaysia. Every time we look back on this moment when we signed this agreement which severed Singapore from Malaysia, it will be a moment of anguish. I mean, for me, it is a moment of anguish because all my life, you see, the whole of my adult life, I had believed in Malaysia, in merger and the unity of these two territories. You know, as a people connected by geography, economics, and ties of kinship. Would you mind if we stop for a while? Lee's resilient spirit prevailed. Putting the pain he endured behind him, he started to rally the people and began the arduous climb towards nationhood. And we will set the example. This country belongs to all of us. We made this country from nothing, from mud flats. Here we make the model multiracial society. This is not a country that belongs to any single community. It belongs to all of us. This was a mud flat swamp. Today, this is a modern city. Ten years from now, this will be a metropolis. Never fear. Lee worked tirelessly with his able team to secure Singapore's future. National service was introduced to build up its own defense quickly. But in 1968, out of the blue, Britain announced its intention to withdraw its troops from Singapore. Lee feared for Singapore's security and economy. The security of the whole region will be very seriously jeopardized unless some uh, rapid rearrangements are made to ensure continuing security without which there is no confidence and without confidence, the boom that we have been having in industrial expansion, so much so now that we haven't got one single industrial site vacant. To grow the economy, Lee made links with the developed world and encouraged foreign investments. 
And in less than 40 years, the World Bank reclassified Singapore from a less developed to a developed country. Lee focused his efforts on providing a better life for Singaporeans. To this end, no feat was too difficult for him. Lee went as far as transforming the once foul-smelling Singapore River into a glistening waterway. And to make Singapore more self-sufficient in its water needs, he defied the elements, preserving every drop of water for drinking. Befriending nature seemed to come easily to Lee. His green initiative culminated in the launch of the breathtaking Gardens by the Bay. It started with Lee planting a tree in 1963, a tradition he never failed to keep. Singapore's transformation into a city in a garden is testimony to Lee's determination to achieve anything he set his mind to, even when it meant defying nature. To Lee, Singapore's well-manicured green landscapes testify to its ability to deliver consistently. So without having to tell anything to the CEO, I knew that he would understand that when I say we will deliver, he knows that we can deliver. That this is a country where the administration works, where there is a system. Because <laughs> you can't just plant a tree and walk away. Keenly conscious of his young nation's vulnerabilities, Lee grabbed every opportunity and every platform to remind Singaporeans about them. Shower on them what you didn't have. He'd written in his memoirs, We had said that an independent Singapore was simply not viable. Now it was our unenviable task to make it work. He turned his National Day rally into a television broadcast to reach as many Singaporeans as possible. And uh, year after year, you make speeches and you keep on pushing buttons, nothing happens. <laughs> so, I'm emigrating. <laughs> We've got one little island, 600 square kilometers. You unwind this, you will not drop down on soft paddy fields. It's hard concrete, your bones are broken, and it's kaput. And you know that Singapore has only one chance, and that is to go up. Tighter, more disciplined, up the ladder. You unwind this, these curtains for everybody. Against the backdrop of Singapore's multi-ethnic makeup, Lee was conscious of how intolerance could unravel the nation's delicate social fabric. His government pursued a deliberate ethnic integration policy. He insisted that everyone should be treated as an equal and came down hard on anyone who stirred up issues of race, language or religion. And let there be no mistakes about it. Whoever governs Singapore must have that iron in him or give it up. This is not a game of cards. This is your life and mine. After we became independent, his, the point which he always reiterated was never do to the minorities in Singapore what happened to us when we were a minority in Malaysia. Always make sure that the Malays, that most Indians have their space, can live the way their way of life and have full and equal opportunities. I, Lee Kuan Yew, having been appointed to the office of Prime Minister, do solemnly affirm... Lee had more than fulfilled his oath to Singapore. To the Republic of Singapore. And when it was time, he could hand over to his successor, a nation no longer frail, but prosperous and thriving. I hope I've helped to consolidate Singapore's advance in 
economic growth and social development. More important, I hope I have got together a core group of younger ministers who can make for continuity of honest, effective and responsive government. I, Lee Sien Long. Leadership renewal became an institutionalized process in the PAP. With leadership changing hands peacefully from one prime minister to the next. Lee continued to contribute to Singapore. He did this as an elder statesman to further Singapore's interests in the world and as the persuader of Singaporeans on domestic issues. And your values, if I knew what my career would be. Lee Kuan Yew stepped down from the cabinet after the 2011 general election. His legacy, the thriving Singapore of today. Could I have lived my life differently? Maybe yes, but probably not. At each stage, I made what was then the best choice. Having taken that decision, I had changed direction and there was no turning back.